so first things first r squared is not a measure of accuracy this is not accuracy when i'm saying accuracy what predictive models i am talking about i'm talking about regression models because this is where r squared value is computed now then if it is not accuracy then what is r squared value r squared value is actually goodness of fit so it is a measure to understand how good your model has fit on the given data on the training data and since its value varies between 0 to 1 so r squared value varies between 0 to 1 it is often mistaken as accuracy like uh, let's say r squared value is uh, coming out to be 0.7 so people say the model is 70% accurate so this is not true r squared value is equal to 0.7 means 70% of the data points are explained by my model so if you have to define r squared as a uh, as a simple english uh, uh, layman definition layman's definition so it will be something like the variance which is explained by the model variance explained divided by the total variance present in the data and we will also shortly understand how this simple definition can be actually mathematically derived onto this this is the formula which you see that the r squared value is 1 minus sum of squared residuals divided by sum of squared as total so we'll understand both these terms from where these are coming but what do we mean by variance explain so consider this scenario uh, where i have just uh, shown you a plot this is your model basically a linear equation or the model which you have cleared created on a given data on some training data points so we are visualizing that how this model is passing through the data and uh, since you are reading about r squared you already know what is model fitting and how do we create a regression equation so look at this red line look at look at this equation of the model you can say that those points which are close to it like like this point or this point which are close to the line they are getting explained so these are the points which are getting or these are the data points which are getting explained we can see these are explained properly and those points which are far away from the line like these kind of points these are not explained by the model why they are not explained because let's say this is the input axis and this is your output axis basically this is this is the one based on this is the predictor and this is your target variable so based on this predictor you are trying to predict the target now for this particular point let's let's take example of this particular point if you extrapolate it in the line over here so for this value for the input value of let's say 11 your model is saying the answer as somewhere around uh, 25 and the actual value is somewhere around 50 so the value which your model is answering is far away from the actual value actual value is somewhere around 50 so there is a huge gap so when there is a huge gap between what your model is answering versus what is the actual value you can say that the model is not able to explain this point so all in all you can easily uh, visualize whatever points are far away from the line or the equation of your uh, model you can say that those points are not explained and those points which are nearer to the line or nearer to the equation of your model they are explained by your model because they are near so there won't be any uh, huge difference between what is the actual value and what your model is predicting based on its, its equation and this ratio this ratio is actually known as your r square like the kind of points which are near to the model which are getting explained by the model versus all the points which are present right this is nothing but the ratio r squared so in in another terms i can write this down that r squared value is the uh, points or the data points the data points near to the equation divided by total data points all right this is another 
simplistic way to understand r square it is a ratio of how many points which are closer to the line versus how many point which are uh, totally present in the data so it's just ratio so if all the points are closer to the line this ratio will go higher and at max if all the points are exactly on the line this ratio will become one this is the max value and if let's say the line you have drawn is very far away from all the points then this ratio will turn out to be minimum as zero this is the minimum value so minimum value of r squared is zero and maximum value of r squared is one and in this range it will vary and we say that whenever whenever we find an r squared value we try to understand the uh, effective fit of the model so on training data this is the training data you try to compute this expression which i have written down here and this gives you a value this gives you a number between 0 to 1 and and what should be a good value should we always try to see that the value of r squared is 1 not exactly uh, an ideal range let's say an ideal range of r squared so it should be at least more than 50 percent so a good range might be 0 0.6 of r squared between let's say 0 0.9 this is a good range which i'll accept for uh, the r squared value for the given model for any model which i'm trying to see whether it has it has learned the data patterns or not now if it goes beyond uh, below 0 0.6 then i'll say the model is turning towards underfitting means it is not even able to explain the 60% of the data which is present. So it is an underfit. It is not a good fit. And if it crosses 0.9, then once again, I'll have to be alert. The model may go towards overfitting. So whenever I look at R squared, I see, I try to see whether it is in between this range or not. If it is lower than 0.6, obviously my model is not fitting the data. It is bad for me. But if it is, if it is crossing 0.9, once again, I, I should be cautious that I am not making any silly mistakes in my uh, data preparation. A common mistake is including the target variable itself in the predictors and you are getting very good R squared value because obviously you are explaining the target variable with the predict uh, like itself. So overfitting is something which you should look at and how do you make sure that your model is not overfit i'm not saying that zero uh, r squared value beyond 0 0.9 is not uh, possible it is possible if your data is good and you have fit a correct model a good model on top of it but always cross check whenever it goes beyond 0 0.6 yeah sorry because uh, 0 0.9 and how do we check we look at the how do we check whether the model is overfitting or not we look at the testing accuracy And this testing accuracy is measured using 100 minus MAPE. I have discussed this in length in a previous video that accuracy is measured for regression cases using this formula. Now, how exactly this 0 0.9 or 0. Uh, 0 0.6 or 0 0.9 is coming? How do we calculate this exactly? So when you will be doing uh, predictive modeling, you test it on some testing data and before that you compute the r squared on training data so r squared is computed on training data so in your training data how the data is arranged is like this you have your target variable and you have your predictions okay so this is the original and this target variable is nothing but the original and here you have the prediction and these values are compared and this is exactly what was happening over here as well. The values which will be present on the line for these given inputs will be the predictions. So predictions will be compared with the original value. And based on this, your R squared value is computed. How? So if you see this formula, uh, the first formula, the layman's formula, which I have written, R squared is the variance explained by the model divided by the total variance. Now the total variance or the variation in the data is measured by using mean of the target variable as a reference. So if you see this y-axis, you can understand that somewhere around this point, uh, there will be a mean value like between, uh, let's say 20 to 30 somewhere. 
let me draw that mean value line with green color okay roughly this is the mean value of target where target variable which is present now can you try and derive the length or the distance of each value from this mean value like this can we do this yes so I can find out the distance of each of these points from the mean value some of the distances from the top will be positive some of the distances from the bottom would be negative I can compute this and when I try to compute this what I end up calculating is the sum of squared errors total so I have jotted down some sample data points over here so that it's easy to understand let's say the original value was 10 you predicted 12 original value was 14 you predicted 13 original value was 18 you predicted 15 now the mean of all these original values of the y-axis or the target variable is let's say 14.6 so 10 minus 14.6 you can derive this 14 minus 14.6 you can derive this 20 minus 14 14.6 uh, uh, 20 minus 14.6 you can derive this so on and so forth so this is nothing but the distance from the mean value so when you take the distance from the mean value and square them and add them up what you get is sum of squared errors total so so it's basically the sum of squared errors sum of squared errors total this is 10 minus 14.6 the mean value whole squared plus 14 minus 14.6 whole squared why, why are we squaring this because some of the values are from the negative side some of the values are positive side so to come up with a overall variance so if you if you look back to the variance formula you will understand like why do we square this so we keep on squaring this and the value which we are getting over here let me write this, write this down is 75.2 let's say so this is the total variance of the data now similarly you can derive the sum of squared errors residual so what we call residual is something which we could not explain or the model could not explain and how that is defined whatever was the original value we subtract it from the predicted value so the example which I gave of not explain you can see the original value is somewhere around 50 and the uh, and the uh, the value which is explained by my model is somewhere around over here so there is a huge distance so this distance is perceived as something which my model could not explain all right and that is what is perceived as sum of squared errors residual so sum of squared errors residual is nothing but the original minus predicted so you can see original minus predicted is 10 minus 12 or 14 minus 13 or 18 minus 15 like this so this whole column I can square and take the summation and this gives me the sum of squared residual so 39 is coming over here so let me write down the equation over here once again so 10 minus 12 whole square plus 14 minus 13 whole square plus 18 minus 15 whole square so on and so forth for all the values and this equates to 39 now how this formula came into picture this so 1 minus sum of squared residual and uh, sum of divided by sum of squares errors total so if you remember the the layman's formula for r squared value is the variance explained divided by the total variance all right so variance explained by the model can be further simplified and say it to be like this the variance which is total minus the variance which the model could not explain divided by the variance total and we know from the calculation that the variance total is nothing but the sum of squared errors total and the variance which is unexplained is sum of squared errors residual so this can be further written as if we divide by variance total then it could be further written as 1 minus sum of squared errors residual divided by sum of squared errors total so this is the formula which you see on the internet all, all the places that r squared is nothing but this formula 
so if i have two vectors if i have an original column and a predict prediction column on the training data this is done on the training data remember this i can simply do this calculation of sum of squared errors residual and sum of squared errors total for these two columns and what i will get is nothing but my r squared value all right so if you can you can try to understand this if the sum of sum of squared errors residual turns out to be zero means there is no difference between the original and the prediction the points are so close to the line that the original and the prediction values are almost same then this sum of squared errors residual will turn out to be zero because the values are getting subtracted from itself and this whole thing will turn out to be one so r squared value is highest when your model is fitted on the training data so close that all the points are falling exactly on the line so a hypothetical scenario where the r squared value will be uh, almost one can be imagined like this let's say your data is spreaded in this situation the data is spreaded like uh, this and you have drawn a line exactly through the points or all the points are falling on the line it, over over this scenario you will get r squared value as 1 so it need not be linear it could be a non linear situation as well like let's say you have created a polynomial equation to explain the data which is uh kind of scattered okay so in this scenario if you fit a linear regression model so it will some somewhere go like this and this r squared value can be somewhere around uh, i'm just giving a rough estimate it could be let's say 0. Point, uh 0.8 or 0.7 but if i create a model which is polynomial and it's passing through every point possible it is trying to explain every point possible then the r squared value for this model would be 1 because there is no difference between original and prediction but these kind of models will perform very poorly on the future data sets or the new predictions you are trying to make let's say in future uh there is a new data point which is coming up so for that new data point the generic model for which the r squared value was modest 0, 0.8 the estimation would be good but for the same let's say the original value was somewhere over here for the same thing the polynomial model might fluctuate a lot so its its prediction might come over here so there will be a huge difference so polynomial model sometimes uh, produce these kind of result where you your r squared value is uh, high on the training data but then once again its performance on the testing data is very bad simply because you tried to follow the data too much and you were not generalizing it so this is why when you are getting an r squared value which is high think of overfitting because you are <clears throat> because you are trying to follow the data so this is exactly what overfitting means you are trying to follow follow the data and you are trying to uh, fit the data um, too much on the training side and that is why it will underperform on the testing side so whenever you get an r squared value which is very high be cautious and try to observe the testing accuracy if the testing accuracy is coming good then you are fine all right so once again i'll summarize r squared value is a goodness of fit goodness of fit where on the training data okay and in layman terms you can think of r squared as the variance explained by the model divided by the total variance which is present in the data and r squared is not the accuracy it varies between 0 to 1 but it is not the accuracy a good range of r squared value is 0.6 to 0.9 if i get a value in between i'll say uh, uh, the model is explaining this much amount of variance in the data in the training all right so i hope this clears uh, the uh, concept of r square and you will be able to explain it in the interview all the best for that i hope you crack it